name is Megan Roach. I'm on the product team here at Pocket Gems, uh, working on episode um, and was the PM of the team and pod that handled the integration of the stream SDK for our book club chat feature. Hi, I'm Ashik. Uh, I'm an engineer here at Pocket Gems. I've uh, been here a while and I was on an episode when we did the integration of stream. Um, I also worked on our previous kind of prototypes of chat prior to this and different versions of chat. And so I've been on, on chat for a while. Honestly, so episode, you know, is an interactive storytelling platform and we use chat for our book clubs feature. And so our main goal there is really kind of to mirror real life book clubs, right? Like create a space for players to connect, communicate and like earn rewards for stories they're reading together. Um, and so I think our main priority here was really just a seamless experience um, for our players. Like chat is very much additive to the episode experience and any friction there would drive players away. Um, so I think working with Dream made that really smooth experience for our players possible. And so we were able to kind of complete that integration without any downtime or player facing impact. It was just kind of invisible. It was there and it worked. Our social ecosystem right now revolves around our book clubs feature. Um, and so just to kind of give a little more context on what that feature is, uh, players can create or join a book club um, and obviously chat with members of their book club, kind of customize that book club to their liking, um, and then um, read stories together to kind of earn rewards uh, with their club. And so we see it as a great way to hang out with people you already know that play episode, meet new players, um, and just, you know, find and, and consume the stories that really are the heart of episode. Um, so the more we can further that engine, I think the better. And so again, you know, book clubs is the heart of that. Chat is kind of the heart of that heart. We are using three of the different stream SDKs. So our, our application episodes available on iOS and Android. So we have stream integrated into both iOS and Android as well as our backend. So the Python SDK that we use in our backend, the three of them you know, collaborate and get together to work with the stream. Uh, we, when we first started, we, we started with just kind of looking over the SDKs, looking at the APIs, understand kind of what the scope of work would be. And we saw that the APIs were very easy to use. The documentation was very thorough. Just using it in general was, was very easy. Uh, from there, something that Stream offered that we were very happy to take them up on was a review, like a design review of both our code, our UI. And so we did that both for our iOS side, our Android side, and I think we may have also done it with our server side as well. And that was really helpful to you know, make sure we were using the SDK, using the APIs correctly. And that was, been, that was really helpful. Uh, I think the, one of the best things about Stream has been the team working with the Stream team. Have been, they've been really responsive, always happy to answer questions. Um, you know, aside from just, you know, we have our monthly or quarterly check-ins, like it's not just that, it's like whenever we need help, we're happy to jump in, which has been really great. We are using the UI kits. Um, so I believe in iOS, it's the Swift UI kit that Stream provides, which is really great. It helps us just kind of drop it in, which is really wonderful. And then on Android, it's the Jetpack Compose, which again, was really great for us to be able to just drop in as a fully, you know, fully realized component whenever you want to add functionality like uh, the emoji reactions, like it's all it's all there, just flag turn on and off, which made things much easier to uh, take advantage of new features as they came out. We had somewhere between three and five developers. And I think the reason we had so many was a mixture of just like a tight timeline we had to complete this as well as just trying to parallelize the work. Um, and so a core piece was having kind of like one stream of work for the iOS side, one stream of work for Android, one stream of work for backend. And so we had at least three at any given time. And then based on other kind of team needs, we'd swap people out. Um, and so kind of the reason we had so many was just kind of given the uh, amount of work in the short amount of time we had. One thing that really stood out to me was the shared Slack channel uh, we had with your team. Um, you know, that always felt like a really easy way to get answers um, and kind of made my job of coordinating some pieces a lot easier. Kind of go back to, you know, the shared Slack channel on how that was useful. Right. Um, we've actually, you know, given y'all some feedback there and had it be addressed super quickly and had engineers chime in. Um, and I thought that was really cool. So, you know, thank y'all for not, not making it a big deal to, to give you feedback. It's super easy to do. So I think, I think we've kind of covered it.
Uh, I was going to just kind of echo more what Megan said, uh, something that was with this project that was one of our I guess, biggest risk, risk areas was kind of migrating a lot of our live existing users onto stream. Uh, and like, like Megan mentioned, um, it went off without a hitch. Uh, we were definitely nervous going into it. Just we have, you know, millions of players around the world and we weren't sure how having it all run live was going to happen with this migration. And it was fine. It was surprisingly fine, which was which was phenomenal. And during the migration, like at the point we started the migration, we started um, c having the data go to stream and our previous setup. Uh, and that, the way the stream had it set up was really made it really, really easy for us to do that. And then as more players kind of like come started migrating over, we just kept kept them on the new solution. I think that was the best part. Like whenever we had a question, like he would he would know exactly who to talk to and we'll pull them in and we did the answer right away. User from the user perspective, the only kind of user-facing change was the change in UI from what we had before to Stream's new solution. Um, everything else tried to keep as seamless, poss seamless as possible. Yeah, I think so. We absolutely kind of survey our players again on kind of overall um, metrics around our social features. Um, and in the case of chat feedback in particular, we honestly kind of see, you know, no feedback as exactly what, what we want here. Again, it's kind of on top of, of the core story reading experience. And so any sort of friction there that would cause players to really recognize it as a big part of the app is exactly what we don't want here. Um, so the fact that it, again, just gets gets to be there and gets to just work um, is, I think, exactly what we were going for. Yeah, I think, um, you know, Scream Chat has kind of become instrumental to kind of the backbone of our social features on episode. And so, um, you know, the general metrics around that of uh, what players are participating in that um, and, you know, how much they're loving it uh, continue to remain super important to us and kind of continue to grow as we iterate on on all of that. Um, so I definitely think Stream played a, played a part in that. So something I wanted to echo what Megan said and, and call out. I know a lot we've been talking about kind of the integration and uh, you know what that was like. One thing I really, really want to call out Stream for is kind of how easy it's been with like live operations as well, like once you did the integration, um, you know, I think with any kind of third party integration, there's always that fear that something will break on their end and so it's black box and you like, you will not know what's going on. And, you know, definitely with every integration we have that fear, I think with Stream, like they quickly dispelled that fear. Um, I think the dashboards have been really easy to use. The team has been really, really responsive. Um, I think an example, I remember like, it was like our first month of using Stream, you know, we're on the dashboard, we're seeing the usage, it's up and to the right, that's great. And then one day we go in and it's dropped to zero. And we're like, oh my God, what happened? No one's chatting. What's going on? We, we, we reached out to stream. They're like, oh yeah, it's just like the the, 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 the monthly reset of the counter. Like it's, it's just normal, right? And we're like, oh, oh my God. Like, you know, if, if I feel like in the past with other teams, like you send this out and then you're like freaking out and you don't hear anything back for like a couple of days, right? And so I'm really glad that stream has been so responsive with live operations. It's been like a, a, a non-worry. We, like, we don't have to think about it, which has been really great. Um, yeah, I definitely think I'd recommend Stream, um, as we've kind of said. Uh, I think, you know, what was originally a very daunting project to us um, ended up being being quite smooth. Um, and so, you know, I think kind of working with a partner here was a clear win for us. Um, and, and yeah, turned something that could have been painful, could have been a long process um, into a, a pretty manageable one for us. Um, and one that we're pretty happy with.